The following broadcast is brought to you by Public House Media. Welcome into the first edition of Fantasy Wizards. Thursday edition. I know Tuesday edition's been going on, but Scott, how are you how are you doing, man? I, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's 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 always fun when you have a Thursday night game that people actually care about. Two four and one teams. We'll see how well that game is played. But the big story came out around three o'clock this afternoon. Ezekiel Elliott now will miss the next seven games, and, and it's kind of a two part story, Kevin. There's people who own Ezekiel Elliott. That's going to obviously that hurts them. And then the next question is. Who's going to be the guy in Dallas that's worth keeping? Is it going to be a committee, which I think it's going to be? And 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 how important and how valuable are these guys? So Darren McFadden is a guy that they were grooming in preseason to maybe be the every down back if Elliott would have uh-huh. been suspended. But now he had been inactive for the last five games. Then you have uh, Alfred Morris, who was yeah, I was going to say, don't forget about Alfred. Right. I mean, he Don't was forget about Alfred Morris. Yeah, right. He was a th- uh, three three times he rushed for a thousand yards, um, but he's a little bit limited in in the receiving side of it. And then you have Rod Smith, who might be the best, you know, well rounded back, but he's young and inexperienced. To be quite honest with you, though, Kevin, that offensive line is so good in Dallas that any one of those three guys would be great. Now, nobody's going to be Ezekiel Elliott, but I still think Alfred no. Morris is a guy that's going to get the first crack to to earn the lion's share of those snaps. Season veteran, I definitely think he's going to. But what's really interesting to me is that I was reading this story earlier today and then writing my own, and it's it's I'm, I'm curious because if the NFL Players Association does in fact file for a, uh, what was it? If they file for some kind of, uh, he can this this suspension can be voided for a little bit longer, just like it was early on in the year. Um, it's I believe. I can't I can't think of the exact term right now, but either way, this is a huge blow to Dallas and for a team that's kind of been up and down. They just lost a heartbreaker to the Packers last weekend Uh, for a team kind of fighting for their lives almost now. I hate to say it, but we're almost halfway through the NFL season. If you're going to look at it that way, we're starting week six. Um you're, we're getting up there, and every game's starting to count now. And so, with Ezekiel Elliott being out, and obviously he led the league last year in rushing yards, I definitely think Alfred Morris is going to be that second guy who steps up. But is he too old? Is he too old, Scott? I I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he'd be my first in line, but I don't think the Cowboys have much of a choice as of right now. Right, and I think what you're going to see, and and this is something that they're not used to in Dallas because DeMarco Murray was the guy who got 80% of the snaps. Ezekiel Elliott was getting 90% of the snaps. Now they're going to have to share a little of that. I don't think Alfred Morris can get 80% of the snaps. There's no doubt about that. So I think he's a guy that you might see on running downs. You might see McFadden on passing downs. And then if as long as Morris is able to hold up, he might stay getting 60% of the carries, let's say. But if he can't hold up, then you've got McFadden. Fat and got Smith. Uh, I, I think the other thing is, you know, you talked about how the players union could still get involved, but if you're Dallas, you got to right. start to wonder if they get involved and they can't guarantee that they can void the suspension and they push this out, say three weeks. Now he's missing the, you know, say week nine through the end of the season. So right. you have to start figuring out what, do you, how do you mitigate your losses? Is it better to take the suspension now? If you, if there's no guarantee that you can get rid of it, the whole thing, because then at least you're back for the playoff stretch, you know, but the playoff run for them, not the fan, not necessarily the fantasy playoff run, because that's when the playoffs start. But I mean, for the Dallas Cowboys and their playoff run. Now, if you're the Ezekiel Elliott owner, though, and you're still in decent shape, you're going to obviously want to hold on to him, because if he is suspended, he still comes back in time for the playoffs, week 14, 15, and 16. So obviously nobody's going to dump Ezekiel Elliott, you're going to stash him away on your bench and just kind of lose a roster spot for the next potentially six to seven weeks. Yeah, and, you know, the good news for the Cowboys is this couldn't have really come. I mean, obviously you don't want to hear your best player being suspended ever. 
But the fact that they're on a bye week this week means a lot, and that means that they can kind of take a step back. They can realize, all right, where are we at? They can kind of take this week now to realize and start filling in Alfred Morris or filling in whoever you want as that back and kind of starting to figure out who's going to be that go-to guy going forward. But if you're just joining us now, Ezekiel Elliott's suspension is now ruled in favor by the Fifth Circuit Court in a 2-1 decision. Um, It's believed that the NFL Players Association filed its case too soon when they originally took – uh, Elliott case or when they took the case to court in Texas just a few months ago. So if they do get involved, like you said, Scott, it's going to be really, it's going to be treading in some uh, open water for Dallas, certainly, but we're going to move on from this topic and we're going to move into a little Carolina Panthers, Philadelphia Eagles, two four and one teams, uh, a little Thursday night football action set to kick off in just a few minutes. Uh, it's a very important game, um, two of the league's best. Uh, only one undefeated team still. I believe it's the Chiefs, right, if I'm not mistaken? Yep. So yeah. the, it's still the only undefeated team, but Philly and Carolina set to kick off in week six. Um, who are you going to be looking for in this one, Scott? Well, first of all, this game in and of itself is a bit of a surprise. If you would have looked at the, the schedule early in the season, Philadelphia was supposed to be decent. Carolina, you didn't know what you were going to get, you know, bounce back. And they're having a bounce back year after a dismal 2016 season. But there's a lot of guys to keep an eye on here. And, and some people are saying, you know, stay away from Carson Wentz. The problem with that is, you know, Carolina's defense secondary has been pretty good. But because of the bye weeks, you might not have a whole lot of other options. You know, Wentz has been really good. I think, though, you're going to see a little bit more LeGarrette Blount in this game for Philly. Zach Ertz is probably the top receiving target tonight for them. I think Newton's a guy you have to start because, you know, Stewart struggled last week. McCaffrey's starting to get a little bit more involved in the offense, but he's still not running the ball uh, a lot. He's doing more more catching of the ball. I think really Funchess is a guy who, who's taken that next step. So Kelvin Benjamin is what we thought he was going to be. He, he's really good. But I like Funchess in this game. And, and I think, you know, he's shown, you know, one two weeks ago he had a good week, but now he's had two good weeks in a row. He's getting targeted. Targeted. So I think if you have him, you're starting him, you're starting Benjamin if you have him. And you know what? If you have some bye week troubles at tight end, why not take a flyer on Ed on Dixon? You know, it seems like Cam Newton's figuring out how to use him now. The first couple of weeks when he lost Olsen, he wasn't sure how to incorporate his tight ends. Last week, Dixon got involved. I think any one of the receivers is a is a a guy you uh, a, a player you would start tonight. Uh, as far as running yeah, back. Be cautious with your running backs for Carolina tonight, but definitely start any of the receivers at Carolina, um, Benjamin Funches or even Dixon, if you need a tight end this week. Yeah, and I'm starting Christian McCaffrey as well, um, just because, and also Cam Newton, a guy who's having quite the year and quite a comeback season story for him. I mean, he's basically leading most quarterbacks in downfield completion percentage this year. Um, also, Carson Wentz doing just about the same thing. Um, so you said that the best option for Philadelphia now is going to be Zach. Or is is there something wrong with Alshon Jeffrey and Torrey Smith? Are they out? Is there something I missed? I'm no, no, pretty no. sure those Jeff- guys are still in. Yeah, Jeffrey's their number one receiver, but I don't like him in this matchup. I think Carolina's done a really good job. Uh, shutting down number one receivers this year. So they've given up more underneath, and that's where I think Ertz is a guy that can really make his money. Both the receivers are playing. And Aguilar is also going to play in this game, and he's another guy who's having a, a, a improved season over last year. There's still good, viable options in certain matchups, but if you have better matchups this week, I might stay away from Jeffries and Smith and Aguilar, but I wouldn't stay away from Zach Ertz because I think he's a guy that can make some yards underneath, and he He's also been their top red zone option. I think it's safe to say that uh, offensive talents on both of these squads are players that I'm going to want to start this week. Um, I don't think it really matters who it is just because let's let's talk third down offense to Eagles rank first, Carolina second. 66 percent. That comes a lot out of the play action and am new to the play action because of his size. Um <laughs> really execute the play action pass like he's been doing uh, this year and leading to their four and one record. A lot of those passes have gone to Christian McCaffrey in the flats. Mm-hmm. You're starting him. You're starting Jeffrey. You're starting Torrey Smith. You're start. You're starting everybody that we've talked about. And Zach Ertz for sure. I think he's going to have a breakout game. 
just because of his size. And I don't know if Carolina really has a guy that's going to be able to cover him as well. Keaton, Luke Keekley will pick up on him a couple times here on switches. But other than that, I really don't know who's going to cover that big body. Well, I would, um, again, then that's certainly fine if, if that's what you want to do. I would be cautious with the receivers for Philly in this game. And I will also remind everybody of, of this, aside from that, that shootout we saw with the Rams and, and San Francisco a couple of weeks back on Thursday night football. And then the Packers and the Bears, which is just a little bit of an, an, an anomaly because of some short fields. Thursday night games always seem to favor defenses for some reason. And I think it might be the short rest, the short week trying to get a scheme together, an offensive scheme together. Yeah, that's in, true, too. A short period of time. And that's why I, I'm always weary. And I like this game because you've got two 4-1 and one teams, but we've seen some brutal Thursday night games over the last three or four years, and I think that's got a lot to do with it. Um, real quick. Let's move. Let's talk about a little bit about uh, Mitch Trubisky, and if you want to start him, I uh, he had a he had, didn't have a great week against Minnesota, but it certainly was promising. And now he's playing the or, uh, he's playing uh, Baltimore this week. So, is he a guy that you're going to kind of look at? Well, think about you know we talk about the bye weeks, but there's some other things in play too. Derek Carr is not going to play. Mariota is a game time decision, except his game is on yeah, Monday. And- so, um, Jack Prescott too. Yep. Right, right. So you might be looking for somebody, and and a guy like Trubisky, a guy like Case Keenum against the Packers, those are two guys you might need to look at for bye week starting. Um, Trubisky, you know, I don't expect huge numbers, but you know what I liked about him when I watched him on Monday night is – the one thing he had that Glennon didn't seem to have is a little bit of confidence. Even when he made some mistakes, which rookies are going to do, he seemed confident. He seemed unfazed by, by some of the mistakes and some of the, the, the lack of, you know, great receivers and, and some of the other things. And I think mm-hmm. that's going to serve him well as the season rolls on. And yeah, you might have to start. I, I'll tell you what, say what you want. Trubisky's a rookie. I'd start him over Joe Flacco. Let's talk a little bit about, too, that the Bears defense get beat up. Uh, uh, Willie Young is now done for the year. Uh, it really hasn't forced as many turnovers as they have in the past couple of years. So Flacco is certainly somebody you might want to look at as well. I, I mean, it's a good matchup, but overall, Joe Flacco has been terrible. <laughs> so this is probably his yeah. best shot at doing anything because of that banged up defense. And, you know, <clears throat> the uncertainty in a running game. So Terrence West isn't going to play. Uh, is it going to be Allen that's getting the carries? Uh, is it going to be Collins? You know, I think there they'll try to go through the air. And, and I'll tell you what, a guy that, that that's really starting to, to reemerge again is Mike Wallace. So we know Jeremy Macklin's there. We know he's, he's their number one. But Mike Wallace is starting to show some signs of life, and he could be a guy you'd want to play this week, again, with bye weeks and missing some players. I think he's certainly a, a good play, maybe even at a flex spot if you're looking for somebody in fantasy. Scott, you, you still with me? I'm here. Yeah, I, you kind of froze up on did you, me. Did you, catch, did you catch what I said? S- sorry about that. No, We're no. We're moving into a little bit of uh, Deshaun Watson talk. So ah. Deshaun Watson, a guy who didn't go first overall in the draft. We're just going to stick with the quarterback theme for a few more minutes. Sure. Uh, now he's thrown five touchdowns in back-to-back games. You know, um, he's certainly a guy that I might want to pick up, even if it is just for trade bait. What do you think? I, I pick him up absolutely. You know, we you you we talked about it when we we kind of did our pilot show out. Uh, and you talked about Fuller and and the value that he would bring to that team. He's brought a lot of value. First of all, he's made Hopkins more valuable. He's given Watson, a young quarterback, another option. And because of that, I, I think Deshaun Watson's a guy you should have. Absolutely. I mean, depending on, on what your situation is, he could be your starting quarterback. I, I think he's definitely a top 12 guy right now. So in a 12-team league, I could certainly see him starting for some people. I, I like him. I think I – I think Watson's a guy that that I would uh, be trying to pick up. And if he's out there, I doubt that he is. But if he's out there, certainly you're going to want to grab him. Um, you know, quarterback play. I mean, think about some of the things that have been impacted. And we touched on it on Tuesday a little bit. Um, Eli Manning certainly isn't going to have the value he had a couple weeks ago losing Brandon Marshall and Beckham and having some other guys banged up. So I, I certainly would have no problem um having Deshaun Watson be my starting quarterback. Uh, some other guys to, to kind of take a look at too. 
um, you know, since we're talking about quarterbacks, um, you know, I've, aside from the obvious, I'm not going to come out here and state the obvious. Although this week, especially with Cleveland, Deshaun Watson's a top five quarterback for me. There is no doubt about it. I think if Matthew Stafford's playing and healthy, and it looks like he is, he was a full participant. He's a guy I have in my top, top high top 10, like top five, six um, against New Orleans. I'd certainly be starting him. Um, and, and another guy who, you know, on Monday night might be somebody to look at. Again, if you're looking for a starter on a bye week, why not Jacoby Brissett? He certainly has been really, really good. I'd stay away from Ben Roethlisberger, not just because he had five interceptions last week, although that's huge. Kansas City's a tough matchup for him, and I think this week they try to establish the run like they did two weeks ago. I think you see a lot of Le'Veon Bell, not so much uh, Ben Roethlisberger. So I don't think Roethlisberger's a guy that I would I would be looking to start this week, uh, given you know I'd be looking for other options. Um, and, and while we're on, on that subject of running backs, you know, again, Le'Veon Bell, a guy that, uh, uh, I keep an eye on. By the way, a big, big day last week for Fournette, Leonard Fournette, and then he appears on the injury report, um, uh, this week, uh, he d- didn't practice, but from all accounts, he's certainly going to play. But some other guys to kind of keep an eye on, maybe some sleepers, um, you know, I think Mark Ingram, I'm interested to see what happens in New Orleans now with Adrian Peterson uh, being traded to the Cardinals. So maybe it's it's an Ingram day. I'm really interested to see what happens with the Packers situation. Aaron Jones had a big week, but two days in a row now, Ty Montgomery practiced. But it's one thing to practice in a non-contact drill. Going out there with broken ribs and getting hit in the chest is a whole different story. I still think Aaron Jones is a guy that I'd be looking out for um, at running back. So, you know, those are some of the, the running backs that are out there. And in receivers, Kevin, I don't know if there's any receivers out there that, that you're really high on this week, but uh, there's certainly a lot of good ones that have some good matchups this week. Certainly so. Um, also, a guy you're going to want to keep your name on, uh, Marcus Wheaton. Uh, if you have him as backup, probably not, but he's done for uh, at least four to six weeks now. So he just got hurt. But before I go, before I go into my uh, receiver, sorry about that, guys. Had little technical difficulties there, but I am back, so no, no need to fear. That trade with Adrian Peterson to the Cardinals makes a lot of sense because of their depth at running back in New Orleans. I like Mark Ingram there a lot, but it almost goes back to what we were talking about uh, a couple weeks ago. We were talking about how the Saints, it's offense, it's getting old. Mm. Now it's going to be interesting to see they added Adrian Peterson thinking it would change it up a little bit. Now that now he's gone, they got a conditional pick out of him. And the, the trade makes a lot of sense for Arizona considering they lost David Johnson and they're still a playoff caliber team. And it'll, it'll take a lot of the pressure off of Carson Palmer. But to me, I... If I'm the Saints, I'm, I'm getting even more worried because you're you're in a tough division, and the Falcons are geared and ready to go, and they're healthy. So I'm not really sure if I'm going after a guy like Mark Ingram. If he's available and I absolutely need him, maybe, but he's not certainly a guy I'm looking at right away. Um, receivers, I'd have to I'd have to give it a look, but I'm starting this week. I'm starting Larry Fitzgerald and Deshaun Jackson. Uh, Deshaun Jackson didn't start for me the first couple weeks, which was a, a mistake on my part. I, I should have had him going. I instead I started Eric Decker and Des Bryant, but Bryant's being on a bye this week. I'm going to start Deshaun, and Deshaun's had a pretty nice start to the year, and he's playing against an Arizona defense, which could be which could loom pretty tough. But I like his matchup, so I'm going to go with it. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald as well going in against Tampa. Tampa had uh, a rough go against the Pats last week. Hung with them for a little while, but I don't. I'm not a huge. I'm not super high on that defense, so I'm going with Larry Fitz in that one as well. Well, you know, so, just, uh, Deshaun Jackson's an interesting case because, you know, he, he had the big game finally against the, the, the Patriots. And then his coach even said, look, we got to get him more involved. You know, mm-hmm. uh, so, you know, this, you know, this, this coming out party he had last Thursday is just the start of it. And here's the thing. Arizona has shut down number one receivers all year, but they've struggled against number two receivers. So Mike Evans might have a rough go. But I think Deshaun Jackson's going to find some running room and so and and be open and make a make some big catches and have the big game, even though his partner in crime, Mike Evans, might have a quieter game than one would expect. Certainly, so um, I, I I agree with what you're saying there too, and so 
And if you're just joining us now, I'm um, sorry about the technical difficulties. I am back here. So I'm Kevin Wellesley, Scott Wisniewski. We're talking a little Fantasy Wizards, uh, our first edition of the Thursday show. Um, we're talking a little bit about running backs, quarterbacks, sleepers, duds, everything you can imagine we're talking about right now. Uh, a little bit of Mitch Trubisky action, too. Um, if you guys have any questions, throw them out there. Uh, more than happy to answer any. Um, but... Any other any other takes before we wrap up the show, Scott? I think we've pretty much wrapped it up. Who you got tonight, Carolina or Philadelphia? You know, I, I always like the home teams on Thursday nights. Um, so I think it's going to be a close game. I like Carolina. I think that you know, I think it, it really comes down to a field goal. Um, and and I yeah, think me too. the only last piece of thing uh, I, I wanted to throw out one other maybe sleeper sort of fell out there. Yeah, um, let's hear it. A tight end. If you're looking for somebody this week, I think Evan Ingram might be a guy. Again, Denver secondary shuts down receivers. Denver, uh, the Giants don't have any real healthy receivers. Maybe this is the week Evan Ingram finally gets some some love from Eli Manning. And if he doesn't this week, then I don't think he's going to do anything the rest of the year. I think there's going to be a game plan where they look to find Ingram. He might be a sneaky sleeper at tight end. I love that sleeper at tight end as well I because I actually just picked him up. Because of that reason, now we're seeing their top two wide receivers out. Uh, no more Victor Cruz because he left. Um, so I, lo- I absolutely love that sleeper. Definitely a guy you're going to want to look at. I also picked up uh, in my other league, Eric Ebron. Um, so And he's not had a great year, um, but I'm hoping this week he kind of breaks out. <laughs> Uh, for Matt Stafford, but th- those are that's my that's my sleeper pick for the week is going to be Ebron because I needed another tight end. All mine are on by. Seems to be the bye week craziness that we'll see the next couple weeks, but this week especially. Um, who, how many teams do we have on bye weeks? We gotta, gotta have a ton. There's at least three or four. So well, there's there's four and there's, ones. there's a couple weeks coming up. I, I I think it's week eight, maybe it's week nine, where there's eight teams out. So there, so oh, there's going to be that's going to be gonna awesome. Be, yeah, right. So there's a week coming up where you better be you better be prepared and have a <laughs> bench because you're likely going to need it. Certainly. So, uh, one, one last thing about uh, running. You think Tariq Cohen has a week like he had in week one? This week, or in general? I mean, yeah. I, I was really disappointed by the lack of touches on Monday, and he I didn't I, get any. Right. Right. He got he, like four or five. Exactly. So I think you're going to see them try to use him more because, again, we, we've seen it work time and time again in the NFL, the one-two punch, right? You need those two backs that you can rely on that, that kind of balance each other out. I think you'll see more of that, especially as they're trying to get Trubisky used to the NFL and used to the speed of, of, of the game. I, I do think you see more of Tariq Cohen. I don't know if he'll have a week as good as the week he had in week one, but I think it'll be good. And I think you'll see certainly more touches from him. And I think they want to also preserve, because if you saw at the end of the game Monday, Jordan Howard went out for a couple plays. I think they want to not have him take a pounding every week. I think you got to balance a little bit of that out. And, and Baltimore, even though they're not the Baltimore that we remember from years ago, they still hit pretty hard. Certainly so. I, I agree, and I'm really hoping for Tariq to have a big week because I just I benched him for a couple of weeks. I had him. Uh, I picked him up after week one. He did all right in week two, and these last couple of weeks been absolutely nothing. So he's in there for me along with Le'Veon Bell, and in my other league I got Melvin Gordon. So I'm feeling pretty good about my running backs this week. Uh, I'm Kevin Wells. He's Scott Wisniewski. Uh, thank you for all listening to the first edition of the Thursday show of Fantasy Wizards. Just as a quick recap, we went over a little Mitch Trubisky action. Uh, he had his first NFL start on Thursday against one of the best secondaries in the entire league. He held his own. Uh, didn't do a whole lot, but he's certainly a guy that you're going to want to look at if you need a quarterback this week because there's a lot of teams out. Uh, went over that, went over our Thursday night predictions. Um, we're really hoping if you guys missed anything, you go back and just hit that playback button and you'll catch up on all the fantasy action that we've brought to you tonight. But thank you all again for joining us. I'm Kevin Wells and he's Scott Wisniewski, and you guys have a great evening.